All right, so uh, section 4.2, we actually start getting into triangle proofs a little more. Um, I know we did proofs earlier this year, but um, it gets a little heavier with proofs in chapter four because we talk about how to show two shapes, specifically two triangles are congruent. Um, so a little terminology to start with. When we're talking about included versus opposite, um, an included angle would be saying like angle W is included between segment WQ and segment WE. So if you look at the picture, that angle is in between these two sides. So it's, we would say it's included between those two sides. Okay, and angle W is opposite segment QE. So if angle W over here on the left, it's across from its opposite of um, segment QE. Okay, um, we could also say segment WE is included between angle W and angle E. So segment W is right here. It's in between these two angles. So it's included between angle W and angle E. And we would also say segment WE is opposite angle Q. So those two things are opposite each other. Angle Q and segment WE are across the triangle from each other, so they're opposite. So when you hear the words included or opposite, that's what we're referring to. All right, our first postulate of this section is the side, side, side postulate. Um, and the short form is just S. To reset my pen. The short form is S, S, S congruence. So this says that if there are three sides of one triangle that are congruent to three sides of another triangle, then the triangles are considered to be congruent. Okay, so in example one, I'm going to mark this up um, so they can make a congruent statement. So let's say that segment AS had one mark on it, and so did segment JR. And then SN, let's say, had two marks. And the third side was marked with three marks, like this. So you notice um, the triangle on the left, triangle ASN, all three sides in that triangle are congruent to a side from the second triangle. So our congruent statement would be saying triangle ASN is congruent to triangle JRH. And then one thing I'm going to point out with my highlighter is in the first triangle, the, the, the first name here, AS, are the first two letters. So AS is that segment. If these triangles are congruent, these letters have to match up. So JR are the first two letters of the second triangle. So segment JR and segment AS should be congruent. And you can see in the picture that they are. Okay, likewise, SN are the second two letters. 
and RH are the second two letters. So SN and RH should be the same. And they are. Okay, and lastly, N A is the sec uh, the third and first letter, and H J is the third and first letter. So N A and H J should be the same, which they are. So when we name the triangles in our congruence statement down here, we have to make sure the corresponding sides match up so that they're congruent to each other. Okay, in example two, we're gonna mark up our triangle a little bit. So in this picture, you can see the two triangles actually share a side. So if we ever had a picture given to us look like this, this side in the middle, RT, is the same in both triangles. So we would know that RT is equal to RT because of the reflexive property. So in this picture, that triangle on the left and the triangle on the right would be considered congruent by side, 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 postulate. And our congruent statement would be triangle RGT is congruent to triangle. If we look to match these up, RG is congruent to RH. So RH has to be the first two letters. And then T would be the last letter because GT is congruent to HT. So when naming the congruent statement, we're matching up the sides that are congruent. Okay, and that is side, side, side congruence. Okay, and then towards the bottom, postulate 13, um, side angle side postulate is just gonna be S A S congruence for side angle side. And that says that if two sides and the included angle of one triangle are congruent to two sides and the included angle of another triangle, then the triangles are congruent. So in our example, let's mark up the triangles like this. So make angle S and angle R congruent. So in this picture, S A and J R are congruent and S H and N R are congruent. So there's two sides in each triangle that are the same. And then you'll notice that the angle in between the green and red side in each triangle is also the same. So that like that yellow angle is in between the two sides that are marked. So that would classify as side angle side congruence. So if we were to name these triangles, if I name the first triangle, triangle H A S, so H A is the side that's not colored. You see there, um, and that'll match up in the other triangle with N J. So N has to go first, and J has to go second, and R would go last to make sure all the letters match up. So like, if you see the yellow angle is angle S and angle R, S and R both come last, or they're the third letter in each of the triangles there. And you'll also see that HS is the first and third letter, and so is NR. HS and NR are the two green segments that are congruent. 
So we're matching up the congruent sides. So that is for side angle side posture. And I believe the last one for today, the last theorem or that is angle side angle, which is ASA congruence. So this is saying that if we have two angles and one included side of one triangle, if they're congruent to two angles and the included side of a second triangle, then the two triangles must be congruent. So in our example, we're gonna mark up the two triangles uh, like this. We're gonna mark two angles in both triangles congruent to each other. And then the included side is going to get marked congruent. So if the triangles look like this, this would be an example of angle side angle congruence. Triangle ASN, if we name that triangle on the left ASN, is congruent to, now if you match up the sides, notice angle A is congruent to angle J. A and J are congruent. So if A came first, then uh, J has to come first. Likewise, angle N and angle H are the same. So if N came last, then H would have to go last in the second triangle. So this would be JRH. So triangle ASN is going to be the triangle JRH because you have to match up the angles that are marked the same. Okay. And another example of this would be We have a picture like this. Okay. If we had a picture like number two, notice only one angle is marked and only one side is marked. But if you look at the picture, there's actually another pair of angles that technically are congruent. If I zoom in over here, we actually have vertical angles that are also congruent. So now we have two angles in the triangle on the left congruent to two angles in the triangle on the right. So if we were to write a congruent statement, we would, could say triangle G H O is congruent to triangle. And instead of G H O, this would have to be T H R. Because G and T were marked congruent. So G and T have to be in the same spot. And then um, GH, segment GH, has to match up with TH. So that's why it's got to be GHO and then THO to match up the congruent sides. Okay, so we can say triangles are congruent and make a statement when we have side, 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 angle, side, or angle, side, angle. So just a couple examples below. Um, I'm gonna mark these triangles and then you, sh you should copy this. And then we're gonna say, are the triangles congruent? Yes or no, and then we're gonna give a reason why. So in number one, put the following marks on your triangles. In number two, put those marks. And in number three, put those marks. 
then we'll talk through these. So let's look at number one. Um, so look at number one, we're trying to say, are the triangles congruent? And if they are, we wanna give a reason. So was it side, 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 angle, side, or angle, side, angle? So if you look, we do have um, one pair of angles that are congruent, right? Those angles with the red dot now, those are the one pair of angles. And we have two pairs of sides. So if we have one angle and two sides, we would try to see, um, would that classify as um, side angle side? So in this picture, is there enough information to say they're congruent? So is it side angle side? And the answer for this one is actually going to be no. We're going to say no triangles congruent. And the reason why, um, if we're doing side angle side, the angle has to be the included angle. So if I look at, let's just say the triangle on the left, this side right here is congruent to that side in the second triangle. And then this side is congruent to this side. If you look at the angle, the angle that is now in blue, that angle is not in between those two sides. It's not included. So that's why we can't say side angle side for that one. So even though there are two sides congruent and one angle, this is not side angle side because it's not the included angle. Okay. In number two, if you look at the picture, there are two sides that are marked, right? One side in the left triangle is congruent to one side in the right. And then also we have a second side that's congruent. So we have two sides, which would be um, two S's. So we should check for side, 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 or side, angle, side. Because it's kind of like having two S's. We're looking for either an angle or a third side. So in this picture, we can actually say that the third side is congruent because of the reflexive property, because they share that third side. This side is the same in both triangles. So are these triangles congruent? Yes, by side, side, side congruence. Because two of the sides were given to us. The third side is the shared side. So it's side, side, side congruence. We could say they're congruent to each other. Okay, and then number three. In number three, all we know is that the two pairs of parallel lines are given to us. So in this one, we have two triangles, the one on the top left and one on the bottom right. They do share a side. So there is one side in each triangle that is congruent. Okay. And we're going to look for anything else that we can mark as congruent. So since the top and bottom lines are parallel, right? We know this line is parallel to this line. And we said there's this side they share. There is actually congruent angles here. Those angles that are marked in blue, actually I'm gonna change it to red. Those angles marked in red are congruent because those green lines are parallel and they're cut by that blue transversal. So therefore the alternate interior angles have to be congruent. Okay. So that, that red pair of angles have to be the same. I'm gonna do a little bit of erasing here. If I go back to my highlighter and I highlight these lines in green, those lines are also parallel. So we have another pair of alternate interior angles in yellow. So those yellow angles have to be congruent because they're also alternate interior angles.
So if I get rid of the highlighted part, in the two triangles, we actually have um, angle side angle congruence. So are they congruent? Yes, by angle side angle congruence, because that blue side is in between the red and yellow angle. So we have enough information there where we could say, all right, the blue side is the same, the yellow angles are congruent, the red angles are congruent, it's angle side angle congruence. Okay, and we, we only could do all that because we knew that the sides were parallel, they're marked in green. Okay, and then uh, looking at the clock, we'll probably get through one of the proofs and we'll finish up the other proofs um, tomorrow just because I don't think we'll quite have enough time to get through all the proofs. So, so far we talked about side, 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 side angle side and angle side angle congruence. And we're gonna show how we can use them to write a proof. So if we're given that segment AC is equal to segment CE and C is the midpoint of segment DB, we're trying to prove that these two triangles are congruent. And the way we can do that is by proving side, 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 side angle side or angle side angle congruence. So thinking back to proofs, the first thing we put down is always the given. So we're given that AC is equal to CE. And we're also given that C is the midpoint of segment DB. Step one is always the given. And in the picture, I'm gonna actually mark out some of this, mark out that AC and CE are equal, just so I can visualize that in my picture too. Okay, so now looking at your picture and then also knowing what's given to you, knowing that C is the midpoint of segment DB, is there something else you could say that is supported by a reason on the right? So is there anything else that is the same or congruent based on what the picture shows and what we were given? Yes, I see. Um, CB is equal to CD. That is correct. So CB and CD are equal to each other. And the reason why is because C is the midpoint of segment DB. So we're going to say in here CB equals CD. And that's going to be definition of midpoint. Because we know if C is a midpoint, the two parts on each side of the midpoint are equal to each other. So, so far we have two sides. That's kind of like the SS part. So we're gonna see. Um, so we're gonna try to show, is there anything else we can show in each triangle is congruent? And that is correct. Um, I see in the chat, the vertical angles are congruent. So. Um, to make this easier to write, I'm going to call this angle, angle one, and the angle over here, angle two. And then in my third step, I'm going to say angle one must be congruent to angle two. I'm going to mark it my picture. And the reason why is because vertical angles are congruent. So they're vertical angles and the vertical angles must be congruent. Now, if you look at the picture again, we have enough information to say the triangles are congruent because in the triangle on the left, we have, to change colors, one side that's congruent. We have an angle in each triangle that is congruent 
and we have a second side that is congruent. So we have side angle side. And that works because those angles are in between the two sides that are congruent. So now we can say, all right, triangle ACB is congruent to triangle ECD. And the reason is side angle side congruence. So we were able to prove the two triangles are congruent by using side angle side congruence.